we can utilise the toggle mode of JK flip-flops in order to implement counter circuits. So a counter is known as a synchronous counter if all the flip-flops share a common clock signal. So all the flip-flops are kept in sync by a common clock. Now, in an asynchronous counter, not all the flip-flops are clocked directly by the clock signal. Usually the first flip-flop is clocked by the clock signal and the subsequent flip-flops are clocked by an output from the previous flip-flop in the chain. Now, these are known as ripple counters because the clock signal kind of ripples along this chain. So the key to building a counter is a bit pattern of binary numbers. And we know, so this table here shows the values from 0 to 15, the both binary and decimal. And we know from binary that the least significant bit toggles every time. So every time we count this bit 0, goes 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on. So bit 1 toggles on every on every count or on every clock. Now we can note here, so bit, so this, the first column is bit zero, and we've got bit one, bit two, and bit three. And we can see, if we inspect this table, that bit one toggles every time bit zero is a one. So every time bit zero is a one, we can see that bit one will toggle. So when that's a 1, it goes from 0 to a 1, and so on. And again, this pattern repeats, so we can see bit 2, so now the, the third column. So bit 2 toggles, so in all these, for these four values here, bit 2 is equal to 0, but bit 2 toggles only when both bit 0 and bit 1 are a 1. And again, so that once it's toggled to a 1 here, it stays a 1. And it only toggles back to a 0 when both bit 0 and bit 1 are 1. And again, this pattern just repeats, so it stays a 0, and it'll toggle to a 1 when both these two bits are a 1. And the same situation occurs for the next bit. So again, so bit 3 is a 1, is 0 for all of these. It only toggles, so it goes from 0 to 1. When bit 0, bit 1 and bit 2 are all 1. So this can be summarised as so. So bit n toggles every time bits 0 to n minus 1 are all 1. And using this knowledge, we can create... Um, a four bit counter very easily using JK flip flops. So, this is a synchronous counter because you can see that all the flip flops are clocked using the same clock signal. So, this is a synchronous counter. The fact that we've got four flip flops means it's a four bit counter. So, this is this is the kind of direction along the chain. So, this is this is bit zero, bit one, bit two, and bit three. So we can see here that the first bit, so bit zero, this flip-flop is held in toggle mode. So this, always, this is always going to be in toggle mode because J and K equals to one. So this is in toggle mode. So we know that this output Q, so Q zero is going to go zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and so on. So every time the clock comes in, Q0 will toggle between 0 and 1 because this flop flop is held in toggle mode. And then we know from the previous table that bit 1 only toggles when bit 0 is a 1. So this, um, so the output just feeds directly into the next uh, JK flip flop. So when Q here is equal to a 1, when Q0 is a 1, this flip-flop will be in toggle mode and its value will change from 0 to 1. And then when it's 0, 
the flip flop will be kind of in hold mode or no change so the value will just stay the same. So this will implement the behavior we saw in the previous uh, table. So it's only, this bit only toggles when bit zero is one. And then we know for the next one along, so bit two, we need bit zero and bit one to be a one. So we just use this NAND gate here. So going into here, we've got Q0 and Q1. So it's only when bit zero and bit one are both one, that that flip-flop, this output will be a one, which then feeds into this flip-flop, which will be in toggle mode. And then finally, this is just repeated. So we know that here, so here we've got Q0 and Q1 from this gate. So when we, and this is Q2, so we know at this point here we've got Q0, Q1, Q2. So this bit, so bit three will only toggle when, bit, when all these three bits are one, just as we can see from here. So we need all these three bits to be a one for this bit to toggle. So this shows the waveforms we can expect on each of the outputs. So we've got our input clock signal. So on every clock, we know that Q0 is going to toggle. And then Q1 will only toggle when Q0 is a one. So every time Q0 is a one, this will then toggle. And then that, because at this, at this point, Q1 has toggled to be a one, but since Q0 is zero, it's just gonna force this second flip-flop to be in hold mode, so it does keep the same value. And it's only when it's a one that it causes it to toggle again. So we end up, so this flip-flop only toggles when the output in the previous clock was a one. And the same situation occurs again for bit two. So this is going to be zero at the beginning. And it's only when both of these are a one that, that they cause this output to toggle. So again, this point here, both of them are one. So we'll then toggle to zero. Both of these are one. So the next, you know, this flip foot will be in toggle mode. And we'll toggle to a one. And again, it's the same kind of behavior for the next flip flop in the stage. So this one only toggles when all three of these, so we need all of these three to be equal to one, and then we will toggle. So we can look at these waveforms, and if you look at the values up here, these gives us a, a decimal value. So we've got zero, 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 obviously gives us zero. And then for example, uh, this one here, we've got zero, one, zero, zero. This is obviously four, zero, one, zero, zero, and so on. So by reading up this waveform, we get the binary values and gives us our decimal uh, uh, equivalent decimal value. So one, zero, zero, one is nine.